A very happy Monday to you all. Hope you all had a fantastic weekend out there in Cougar Nation. We kick off our week today with a look at BYU football. Looking back at BYU football media day, some of the conversations I had with players and coaches. Today we talk with two coordinators, Ed Lamb, the special teams coordinator slash assistant head coach, and Fessy Satake, BYU passing game coordinator and wide receivers coach. Join me on today's edition of Locked on Cougars. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, my friends? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. I work for the Zone Sports Network in Salt Lake City, Utah, as the executive producer of DJ and PK in the morning. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. We are very proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where the motto is your team every day. And as such, this is your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. The goal here simply stated to make you the smartest BYU fan in the room. Make sure you guys sound super brilliant when you're talking about the Cougars with your family and friends and today on the show uh if you're watching this I am actually in Southern California I am not uh doing this show live I actually pre-recorded all of this I'll be wandering around Disneyland in the greater Orange County area so if you happen to be down there look for a guy who's chasing two young kids and you'll probably find me Does that sound like very generic probably but nonetheless wanted to make sure you guys were taken care of this week in the lead up to the 4th of July early next week but today on the show we're going to catch up with two coordinators on BYU staff guys that I talked with at BYU football media last week we'll start off on the offensive side of the football had a great conversation with BYU passing game coordinator Fessy Satake obviously also the position coach for BYU's wide receivers so without further ado here you go Fessy Satake with myself on Locked on Cougars How's it feel to be back at media day? Feels really good. Just means we're means means the season's right around the corner. Mm-hmm. Um, despite what people think about media, I love you guys, man. So it's it's uh, it's good to be back and talk talk a little bit of football. When it comes to your wide receiving core, we'll start there. Is you lose Neil, you lose Samson, so you lose two proven production guys, but you also bring back Puka as well as Gunner. Are you happy with the guys you have returning, or do you feel like okay, I lost two really really good guys? Yeah. I lost two really, really good guys, but but that's been every year since I've been here. We've lost a good chunk of production. So at the beginning, you know, when I was first here, I, w- I had a lot more nerves. But now I just get excited because I, I'm excited to see who steps up and feels in that production. So I'm not so concerned about losing that production because I know next man up is going to pick up the rifle. What we lost a lot of, though, with those two especially, um, aside from just their leadership and energy, is the size. Um, the big, that physical, um, you know, impression that you um, you have on a week-to-week basis in our group. So, I, I uh, you know, we have Keanu Hill, we have Chase Roberts, Braden Cosper, we have guys who can who, who have that size that can fill that role. But, um, but yeah, I, I, we're going to miss those guys, but I'm just as excited for, for the next guys up. Gunner's guy has been around here forever. We've seen him for four years now. What do you expect for him to still accomplish, I guess, in a BYU uniform? Yeah, really, I know one of the big things even you'll hear from himself is to make it throughout the entire season. Um, and and our, our talks have been, like, don't put so much pressure on yourself on that. Like, handle what you, you know, control what you can control right now in the off offseason. Um, don't put too much energy into, like, you know, am I going to stay healthy? Just just do what you've been doing. Stay the course um, while trusting the process of, of, of rehab and all the stuff he's been doing. But really, it's just it's those little small steps he needs to make that he's been doing every year. Get a little bit faster, a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, and then most importantly, just stay healthy throughout the whole season. And I'm confident he'll uh, he'll uh, have many more playing days ahead of him. We had Pook on the radio show. This goes back, I think, a couple of weeks. But he said that this is the first off season in his entire college career he's been healthy. He says that's going to be a big advantage. What do you expect? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, it's been so big to have. Puka around and not in a training room or something like that because he brings a, an, an energy that our group really, really needs. For him on an individual basis to be able to just, you know, build those reps with and that chemistry with the quarterback with his teammates, it's, it's critical. And sometimes people don't understand the value of being able to throw multiple times a, a week with 
with your quarterback who's going to be throwing to you, you know, running those same routes that you might versus different looks that might show up in the season. Um, a lot of people just think, oh, fall camp onto the season, but this is where it all happens. And so the fact that he's available and, and uh, willing and, and able to do all that is, is going to be, I think, could be signs for a really big season for him. The guy I feel like is getting overlooked in all this is Keanu. I feel like he really had a good stretch run last year. What do you expect from him this year? Yeah, to pick up where he left off. Um, you know, he's a he's the guy plays the position with passion. He uh, he's a guy that just makes plays when um, the opportunity's there. Whether it's going up and making a catch, you know, you think about USC in the post, or whether it's making a huge block that's going to spring. You know, in Utah State, he was on one of those blocks where Tyler's 20-yard run turned into 60. Um, and so he's just, anytime he's on the field, he plays with passion, and, and uh, I expect big things from him this year. I'm really excited for uh, the opportunity he has. He's got a really interesting family legacy. Dad's an All-American at Texas Tech. Do you feel like he kind of resembles his dad or his uncle in any way, or is he his own type of player? I think he's his own type of player. Um, when I recruited him out of uh, at Trinity, he really didn't have many offers. I think I think it was us in Wyoming were the only two offers he had. It was a triple option offense. Right? Yeah, exactly. And he was just yeah, he wasn't fully developed as a receiver despite his bloodline. And in fact, there were there were moments where I was like, this guy could be an outside linebacker. His mom is Tongan, and he's got the genes in him to like to get big. You can see him now. Um, and and our defense was open for it. They, they knew that if it didn't work out at receiver, that, that he, he would be able to play linebacker. But to his credit, he just put his head down and worked. He's different than his uncles, I think. He's a more of that bigger physical type of receiver um, who imposes his will on people. What he might lack in a little bit of like twitch and athleticism that maybe they had, he makes up for in just size and strength. And, and um, just I just love the way he plays the game. You mentioned two guys earlier, Chase Roberts, Cody Epps. I think a lot of BYU fans, they want to see these guys on the field. What are the realistic expectations for both of them? Mine's in line with them, is to get, get them on the field. Um, it's I have a good challenge. I have to play. I want to play. I have a deep group. And so i got to play as many of my guys as I can without disrupting the flow of our veteran guys. And that's a challenge. Some years it's been three. Some years it's been six. Um, and so that's kind of to be determined. Uh, we I, Obviously, Puka and Gunner are, are the tier one veteran guys. Keanu's a proven guy who's going who's gonna to play a lot of reps this year. And then between Chase Roberts, Cody Epps, Brady Cosper, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how all that unfolds. Those guys are going to be ready. They've made huge strides this offseason. Um, they could play. They could start for us game one. They wanted to, but it's a situation where we've got to see how it all unfolds. Is Braden on track to be fully healthy? Yeah, he is. He looks great right now. He looks good as he's, as he's ever been. Um, we just got to make it through fall camp. It's always kind of around this time of the year where, where those injuries have struck in. And, um, I hope he, hope he stays healthy. Last thing for me is the passing game coordinator. You've got actually more of an oversight of the just overall passing game on this offense. Jaron, he's QB1. He, he looks like he's poised to have a big year. What do you want to see from him going into training camp and then on into the season? Another thing with him is just health. Same thing. If he's available for us every single game, man, our offense can, will be hitting on all, all cylinders. Um, he's been working so hard this offseason, individually, on his own time, privately, um, with the group, with the guys. He's growing as a leader. You can see his body changing. I think he's on the verge, um, on the cusp of having a really, really big year, especially if he stays healthy the whole time. Does NIL play any role in helping these guys focus a little more in your mind? You know, I, don't, I think that's an individual by individual, you know, case. Like, how, how some of these guys, it might be a major distraction. Some guys, I think, can can handle it and, and take it face on and, and you know, but I, I feel our team, relative to a lot out there, has, has been able to handle NIL really well, and it hasn't become a distraction. It's actually been more of a, um, you know, a, a strength and a help to, the, to their game. There you go, Fessy Satake, BYU passing game coordinator, coordinator, excuse me, as well as wide receivers coach. A big thank you to him for taking the time to sit down with me. Uh, by the way, some of the audio quality on this. Uh, I was trying to get it to where I wanted it to be, and it's not the best. I apologize. Some ambient noise in the background. I had a setup that I thought was going to work. Didn't fail. So obviously the best laid plans are doomed to fail. I think that's the phrase out there. So I, I think you guys still got the gist of what he was talking about. I thought that the, his voice came through pretty clear, all things considered. So big thank you once again to Fessy for taking the time. Coming up here in just a moment, we'll finish out today's show, a little bit shorter edition of the show, but we will catch up with BYU assistant head coach, special teams coordinator, and safeties coach Ed Lamb. But first, a word on our friends over at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports information. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, 
interviews and news, including this year's Stanley Cup playoffs, as well as the Major League Baseball scores ongoing every single day. Right now, you can still get BYU over under on their win total this fall, eight and a half. And if Fessy's talking made you feel bullish about BYU's chances, get over to betonline.net. You can take advantage of that number now. It is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And betonline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. Check them out. Betonline.net is the fastest and the easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf as well. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about trends in action available to you now. It's all courtesy of friends at Bet Online, where the game starts. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Let's get into the second part of today's show and catch up with BYU assistant head coach, special teams coordinator, as well as safeties coach Ed Lamb. Here you go, him speaking with me one-on-one last week at BYU Football Media Day. It is the final independent media day for BYU. You've been here the entire time. Kalani's been here. Is it? Are you going to miss this in a way? Um, you know, I, I definitely think that um, speaking to the media is a way to get our messages out to our players, to our fans. And so, yeah, I, I don't think going forward, typically in a conference, the assistant coaches aren't going to have this type of media day obligation. And so we'll, we'll probably have a lot less – uh, of our sound bites as assistants going out, and, and I will miss that opportunity. Yeah, we'll we'll make sure to request you more often then at that point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's talk a little bit. I want to start with actually special teams, if we could, for a minute here. And the guy I want to ask about first is Ryan Rico. He had I felt like an absolute monster year a year ago. He's a big body, big leg. What does he need to improve on most in your mind? Uh, you know, I think I think he left a couple of a pin, what we call pins, out there. Um, getting the ball inside the, the 10 or the five yard line in those kind of situations. I think um, he can uh, change his pocket a little bit more, keep keep guys off balance, and we intend to do that. Excuse me. We intend to do that some this season, and so we'll just continue to work uh, toward, toward uh, improving the great skills that he always, already has. We saw him, I guess this goes back two years with that fake punt. Was that last year or two years ago? He showed off his, his athleticism. Is that something you want to take more advantage of potentially? It is. You know, that, that uh, we go out with the green light quite a bit on, okay. on our punts. And so that just happened to be a situation where the game was out of hand. And it, and it, it turned into a situation that I regret. But the game was out of hand. Mm-hmm. And so the opponent, they, they did a, a very – they only rushed one guy. And that is, you know, not really sound football. They were, I think they were counting on us thinking, oh, the game's over. We'll just punt it no matter what. Well, Ryan did what he was trained to do. He recognized that there's only one rusher, and he took off running. And we didn't need that at that moment. And the idea of a fake punt when you're up by 40 points is, you know, it's like sportsmanship comes into play. Um, so, you know, in the right moment, yeah, we, we want that to happen, but we need to have some protective mechanisms in place to make sure we're not taking undue risks or embarrassing an opponent. Jake Oldroyd returns, had an up-and-down year a year ago, mainly the injury concerns. Are they related to the injuries he had as a freshman, or is this a separate deal that he dealt with a year ago? Um, yeah, those are those have always been soft tissue injuries with the with his back muscles, back spasm, things like that. So he's just continued to work hard. They, there are always things that he's been out from and then came back from, and, and we anticipate he'll he'll have to continue to work through those things. Right now, he seems like he's in great health, and it's been a pretty long streak of great health. Well, he was a Groza Award finalist in 2020. Do you expect him to return to that type of form? I do. Yeah, yeah. There's a uh, you know the, there's a little bit of um, fortune I think that comes with with place kicking, field goal kicking as far as getting inv- involved in those national awards. Got to you know be uh, perfect or almost perfect, and so some of that has to do with okay, what you know from what distance is are we attempting field goals, and uh, how well is our our snapper and our holder doing? So I guess what I'm saying is I, I really felt like he was at that form last year, but the the results didn't always show it. And same with a quarterback who's got receivers that are dropping balls or whatever. That's it's a team effort, and and for him to get, you know, all the credit and you know is something that we'd all be excited about. But but we need to put it all together for him. One more on special teams. Hobbs Nyberg, I, I expect he's going to return as your punt returner. Who is going to be your kick returner? I guess, or do you have a group? Yeah, well, Caleb Christensen has done a lot of it. He's got the most experience, um, so he'll continue to be in the mix. Miles Davis showed some flashes last year. Just want to continue to work on his 
the way he sees it and the way he carries the football through traffic and, and we're working at that on on that uh, for him on offense as well he's got a lot of ability there and uh, you know just just overall kind of opening it up through training camp to a lot of different players and see what if we've got some receivers defensive backs running backs who can make a difference there i talked to you about your safety group here for a minute. Malik Moore returns. He's kind of the other statesman of this position. What more does he need to prove and or improve upon in your mind? I'd like to see him become a better, more consistent tackler. We had some uh, big plays against our defense last year where he had an opportunity to bring the, the ball carrier down earlier than he did, and uh, we'd like to, like to see him improve in that area. Um, and also in his uh, pre-snap communication to the rest of the defense, just be taking more and more of a leadership role as he gets older. Jacob Robinson played at safety, but he's expected to move back to Nickelback here. Is that going to open up spots for guys like Ammon Hanneman, Taylor Alfrey coming back off an injury, that type of stuff? Yeah, absolutely. George Udo's back yeah. from injury too. So I think at the strong safety position, uh, Micah Harper, Ammon Hanneman, uh, George Udo, they're, they're all going to be in the mix there and probably all play at the free safety position. Yeah, really like uh, really like where we're at with Malik and Hayden Livingston give us a lot in the past. And then Talon Alfrey, I think, can be maybe both positions. We're trying to figure out what the right spot is for him. He was pushing for playing time last year and got hurt in the summer. With that many bodies, uh, two safety spots, how do you balance, uh, I guess, the playing time and making sure that everybody feels like they're getting their fair shot? Yeah. You know, it'll, it'll really just be about the best production for the team. And I, and I can't answer that right now. I don't have, you know, I don't have any objection to one player playing the whole game. I don't have any any objection to five players playing or more. Like, it's going to be how can we get the, the best, most consistent production throughout the game. Last thing for me is, as you guys prepare for the Big 12, I know you have a you have a bigger role in the recruiting and the, the philosophy. What do you want to see, I guess, I don't know, improved upon is probably not the wrong term, but maybe changed, if anything, with, with regards to your guys' recruiting philosophy going into the Big 12? Well, we're certainly going to be able to go after a higher profile player. You know, there's... there's um, you know, I think as a as a young coach, and I've been there, and and maybe some of the, the younger guys on our staff, I think there's this idea that we have that we can just go and, and out recruit other people, and and the reality is that that can be a, a really good way to, to spin your wheels and waste time, and not get the players that you should get. We've had in the past players that have grown up BYU fans, would want to come to BYU. In the end, say, coach, I would just want to play at the highest level. And I believe that now that we're included in that highest level, you know, our current our current team is not in the Big 12. We've got a very important year of uh, final year of independence here, but our current recruiting class is being recruited to the Big 12, and we've seen a lot fewer of those objections. There's a lot more doors open, so there's no question in my mind the the profile of the players that we're recruiting is going to increase. You know, I'm I'm still comfortable saying, you know, I am a big believer that. Uh, the ages of 18 to 23 are a very developmental age. I think that you know, even amongst five-star recruits, there are still some players with more development potential than others, and I'm always going to lean toward that. You know, the idea that I dictate that way our whole uh, staff, you know, I, that sometimes I think that's a little maybe overblown, probably just because I'm, I'm willing to speak out and talk about processes more than some other guys. You know, they played a little closer to the vest. But each of our coaches, they recruit in their own way, and they recruit according to their own philosophies for their own position. And I think, you know, I think a lot of these guys deserve credit for putting a great product on the field the past couple of years. There you have it, BYU assistant head coach Ed Lamb, special teams coordinator, obviously, talking a lot about that, his safeties group, and what he expects from the team overall in recruiting. There's a lot going on with BYU going to the Big 12, and I, I love Coach Lamb. His... I. Uh, candid nature i guess the easiest way to say it i love interviewing him and the fact that if we may get to talk to him less as byu goes into the big 12 i think is, is a disservice to us in the media it's a disservice to you as byu fans but i am hopeful that byu will maintain letting us speak to guys like ed lamb on a fairly regular basis because i always learn something when i speak with him so a big thank you to him for sitting down with me all right that is going to do it for this monday edition of the show come back tomorrow have a great conversation on deck with corbin kafusi yes the 
former BYU star defensive lineman, now turned offensive tackle, recently finished his first run in the USFL. I had a season ending injury. We'll talk about that with him. We'll talk about uh, what he expects from BYU this upcoming fall. A great exclusive conversation you'll only find here on Locked On Cougar. Stay tuned for that tomorrow. And a big thank you once again for making us your first listen of the day. Now I want to encourage you guys to get over to Locked On Big 12. Make it your second listen today. Josh Neighbors does an incredible job making sure you are apprised of everything going on in the Big 12 Conference. Make sure you guys check that out wherever you get your podcast, just like this one. Until tomorrow, have a great rest of your day. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast for There you go, Ed Lamb, BYU special teams coordinator, wider, not wide receivers coach, safeties coach, as well as special teams coordinator. Uh, just a great interview. I love talking with Coach Lamb. Interesting to hear his thoughts on BYU extending a far reacher, uh, not far, far reacher, a far wider net in terms of their reach when it comes to recruiting as they get ready to go into the Big 12. And they're already doing that. He talked about the fact that this recruiting class that they just most recently signed and the one that's upcoming, they're Big 12. That's what BYU is going after right now. And that's really cool to hear from him. And I'm of the opinion that BYU needs to maintain letting us speak to guys like Ed Lamb on a fairly regular basis. Every time I have a conversation with Coach Lamb, I come away more knowledgeable in my uh, understanding of the game of football as a whole, but also just about things with BYU stand. You heard him talk about the fact he enjoys opportunities like BYU football media day to get in front of the media and explain things. He's a true uh, coach uh, in terms of like the, the access he allows. There's not many coaches like him. He talks about the fact that he's willing to uh, speak out on certain things and it's really cool to catch up with him. And like I said, if we have that access curtailed as BYU goes into the big 12, I think it's a disservice to everybody, fans, media alike. I think we all would be done a disservice if he is speaking to the media less. But nonetheless, thank you to Coach Lamb for taking some time to sit down with me at BYU Football Media Day last week. More conversations like that throughout the week as well. Come up on tomorrow's show, an exclusive one-on-one -on -one conversation with former BYU defensive lineman Corbin Kafusi. Just recently uh, finished his first campaign, his first run in the USFL. They have their playoffs this weekend. His team did not make it, the Tampa Bay Bandits. He also suffered a season-ending injury. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about his expectations for the, for the Cougars this upcoming season. So stay tuned for that on tomorrow's edition of the podcast. And a big thank you once again for making it your first listen of the day. Now go make Locked On Big 12 your second listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys tuning into the show. Locked On Big 12, make sure you're up to date on everything going on with BYU's new conference home. Get it free and available wherever you get your podcast. That's going to do it for us. Have a great rest of your day. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast. See ya.